Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and I've been getting back into some of the experiments I've been doing with smelting black sand and sulfide concentrates off the shaker table. And this video series, I'm going to be doing some experiments with determining what type of collector metal works the best for gold recovery. So we're going to do uh, several different smelts with several different collector metals, and I'm going to get the slag assayed to determine how much gold and silver we lost. And I'm also going to assay the head ore that we use, the concentrates off the shaker table, so we'll know how much gold we put in. And by finding out how much gold we had to start with and how much gold we lost, we should be able to find out the percent recovery. So first, just real quick, uh, let's go over the furnace. This is uh, just a propane bottle. Uh, there's a regulator I bought off eBay. And this is a little homemade furnace that I made myself. Costs about 100 bucks. This is a two inch kale wool that I've just banded on with some tie wire and some banding. And underneath, it's an eight inch piece of stainless steel pipe. There's two, there's one, and there's another one on the other side, tangential inlets for the propane, a cap plate, and then a three inch square tube for the exhaust. The other reason I really like this uh, furnace style is the fire bricks are really cheap and uh, I've been experimenting with a lot of different flux recipes and sometimes they boil over and so you have your, your fire brick hearth that gets all the uh, slag that comes out, boils over the top and lands in your fire brick hearth. This thing's about $10 worth of fire brick. So when it gets so bad that I can't use it anymore, I throw the fire bricks out. In this furnace, I've done about 30 charges now but that's really in a nutshell the furnace and the setup to it, it gets way over 2000 degrees fahrenheit copper melts no problem in it it's a great smelting setup the the liner stainless steel is easy to replace the hearth is easy to replace if you start spilling stuff and you know hot goo all over the place it's not that big of a deal here's the material we're going to be uh, experimenting with this is uh some high grade concentrates off the shaker table. On all of the charges, I'm gonna be adding metallic iron in the form of, I think I'm gonna use a piece of uh, steel flat bar, and I stick it right down the top of the furnace, right into the crucible, and uh, that way the iron will reduce any of the other metallic components, lead, copper, into metallic form, and they will precipitate, hopefully down through the slag, and collect in the bottom as uh, metallic uh, metal either in the collector metal that we use or as a button if we don't use any collector metal. So, okay so we've added our <clears throat> three components to our flux here. We've got 100 grams of uh, number one shaker table concentrates in the bottom. I've added 150 grams of soda ash, 30 grams of silica, and 30 grams of borax. I'm going to take it, put a lid on this, shake it up, mix it up real good. And we keep the flux really basic because the basic flux will absorb the FES, the iron sulfide that we create by adding the iron, the metallic iron to this material as it fluxes. So when, if there's any galena in here, the PBS will convert to FES and the result will be metallic lead that will then fall down to the bottom. Okay, we just put our charge in. I've got a piece of rebar sticking out the top of the furnace the crucible down there it's just starting to glow a dull red so I just added the charge and I'll let that it'll probably take about 10 minutes to uh, fully melt and then I'm gonna fuse it for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes okay so we've got our stuff all up to temperature it's not uh, forming a bunch of bubbles it's all nice and quiet now so we're gonna go ahead and pour it into our preheated cone mold Add my copper for our next experiment. 
There's our next round. Here's our cool down slag, and we're going to knock that out of the cone mold, and we'll see what uh, ended up being reduced on the bottom as far as metallics. Okay, so I just take my cone mold, I turn it over in my metallic bin here, give it some taps with the hammer, and usually the slag comes out. Yeah, there it is. So there's our slag. It's probably still hot, but this right here looks like our... Yep, yeah, so there's our metallic button. And again, this was just adding iron uh, to our basic flux and our uh, 100 grams of stuff off the shaker table, and we ended up with a little metallic button. So we reduced the uh, less reactive metals than iron by putting metallic iron into the mix. So here's our little metallic button from our first experiment. And it's still, it's not quite cleaned up. There's still a little bit of slag on there, but it looks like from 100 grams, we ended up with 18 gram button in the bottom. So that's actually pretty good. All right, so this is our first sample of the collector metal. We used copper. Oh, it came out as a nice piece. So there's our collector metal that all came down to the bottom. We added uh, 100 grams of copper, high surface area copper. You can see on the slag, it's fantastic separation from the metallic section uh, from the slag. There's no beads of copper or anything in the slag left there. The slag is nice and hard and competent. The metallic section is flat on the top. That's just about as perfect as it gets. Also, I wanted to point out one more thing. I broke our slag apart and you can see there's no mat at all. There's no mat layer. So the basic slag did its job. It absorbed all the uh, iron sulfide that we made and it really came out just, I mean, that was a beautiful pour. That really worked very nicely. All right, for this next experiment, I'm gonna use silver as a collector metal instead of copper. All right, I just poured our first silver test. And you can see there's our silver collector metal at the bottom of the cone. All right, here's our silver button collector metal. We ended up with 108 grams. So we started with 94, so that's uh, 14 grams of additional metal was collected by the silver collector. Okay, we just knocked our uh, lead charge out of there. And it might be hard to see, but there's a lead button at the bottom of this one. So I, I had about one and a half kilograms of shaker table concentrates that uh, I used the same slag or the same flux recipe for all of these samples. And the only thing I changed was the collector metal. But I took out two separate samples of the shaker table cons. So we're gonna send these off for assay. That will tell us how much gold we have in our sample that we started with. The first test I did, and all these are duplicates of each other, the first test I did two samples exactly the same of no collector metal. So I used my flex recipe, added iron to reduce all the metallics uh, above iron on the reactivity chart, but we ended up with two little buttons with no collector metal used. The second one we did, I took uh, high surface area copper and mixed it in with the entire charge, 100 grams of copper. 
The second one we did was we just added uh, 100 grams of copper right to the bottom of the charge. We put it right in the bottom of the crucible. The next one we did was we used silver, uh, used three troy ounces of silver, ended up being about 94 grams of pure silver. And I used the button twice and put it right in the bottom of the crucible. The last one was uh, I used lead and I put 100 grams of lead in the bottom of the crucible, put the charge right on top and we used lead as a collector. So there are all of our different samples. I'm gonna send the slag of all of them off for assay and the slag will tell us how much gold and silver is left over after the collector metal was used. I've really gone back and forth with myself about if I'm going to crush up the slag and see if there's any metallic beads left over in the slag. And if there is, should I get those out because it will contaminate the, the assay. And I am not going to crush up the slag. I'm gonna send it as is. The reason we're doing all of this is because I wanna know the best way to go about collecting the most precious metals the easiest possible way. If you need a high surface area uh, collector metal that is throughout the charge that trickles down through, that's okay, we need to find that out. If you can just put a slab of metal in the bottom and have it collect through contact with the convection going on in the uh, crucible, if that works, great. If silver works better than copper, we'll know that. If lead works better than copper, we'll know that. So th this is a first pass trial run to figure out how much gold and precious metals we can recover through smelting without roasting and by using iron as a reducer and then we can assess which collector metal does the best job.